good afternoon, um, messieurs, mesdames. Um, I'm um, afraid my French is not good enough to be able to deliver this in French, uh, so I shall be delivering, delivering in English, but I shall be giving a copy of the slides on a PDF which could be available to anybody who wants to follow up on what I have to say. Uh, the subject I was asked to talk about today was systems thinking, which is a way of thinking about complex systems which enables us to understand why uh, complex systems often cause some quite considerable surprises uh, when we start to in, in, in implement them, and often some unintended consequences which we need to deal with and deal with promptly in order that they be successful. <clears throat> I, I, that what I'm saying is based upon thinking which has come from all over the world. It's not just come from Bristol or anything like that. And over the last 30 years or so, it's not, uh, and all I'm trying to do is to pull it together and see how it is relevant, for example, to Systems X. Um, my presentation is built around uh, four integrated, interconnected concepts. And they are people, purpose, the intentionality of what we're trying to do, um, the why of what we're trying to do, purpose, intentionality, why, really important, uh, and, and what I've called new process, because sometimes the word process is too narrowly defined. But a process, uh, I would take to mean what we do to change things. And that includes everything that's involved, not just the mechanical things that, that's important. And finally, as in any engineering uh, environment, we need to consider performance. Actually, how well does it succeed in doing what it's doing, and how can we make it do it better? <clears throat> so so I, I, first of all, let me introduce some of the complex systems that we're facing. Uh, uh, aging nuclear power stations, uh, flood uh, defences, which are going to be challenged by the uh, global warming that seems to be occurring, transport systems of enormous complexity these days, uh, the governance systems, and that I've shown the Houses of Parliament there, um, the, uh, the, the trading floors in, uh, 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 for, for finance, for example, very complex systems which ca cause some quite interesting unintended consequences. Uh, the cloud, which I've put in, in the form of um, some very large data storage. Uh, recycling, um, the uh, space uh, uh, and all the technology that now is coming from space is causing us uh, some really interesting complexities. The emergency services, the hospital services, and, uh, and of course uh, the aircraft and so on, which is one of the areas where systems engineering has had a particularly long and, and uh, important development. So those are the areas which we're talking about. But I'd also like to emphasize that because of various factors, the world is getting more and more complex in these areas. Globalization of, of supply, privatization of finance, sustainability that we require in order that we overcome some of these issues of climate change, democratization as it is occurring around the world. It's got some very difficult unintended consequences going on. Um, the desire and drive to create shareholder value and, and its short-term effects are, uh, seem to be very important. Internet um, communications themselves are co creating greater and greater complexity. Um, uh, safety constrained innovation. We're seeing systems which can't be developed because of the safety constraints that are going, constraints that are going on and we're getting dominating technologies which we can't go on from but just because of the safety issues. And the inter interdependence of infrastructure, which is a particular area that I have um, uh, <coughs> recently been taking quite considerable interest in. Frankly, in UK, at least, and I suspect it's elsewhere, we're living off our uh, legacy infrastructure, and it's failing us economically. Uh, we have to do far better, but we have to do for far less. I mean, the, the National Infrastructure Plan in UK has got £466 billion worth of projects in it, and that's probably an underestimate 
by a factor of two in, the, in, in, in actually what's going to be needed. And the exchequer could only afford a third of that. So what are we going to do to actually deliver the infrastructure that's needed for the next century? That's a really big problem. Um, and I believe that the successful build businesses that can learn better and faster together because it's learning to get the integration of, pro uh, of, of, com of products and components and services into outcomes is where the real big improvements can be, can be made. So learning together and learning is actually, I think, a and how we learn is a really important feature of what we mean by systems thinking. If we don't, then I predict that in the next century or so, we uh, uh, in the advanced economies are going to be declining into a third world economic performance because of the importance of infrastructure on our performance. <coughs> what do we mean by complexity? Is this complex? Anybody like to suggest? <laughs> well, I, I'd say no, it's not complex. It's complicated. It has many, many components to it, but it's in, because that is a, um, um, an animated gift, GIF file, it is totally definable. The relationship between all those components is absolutely definable. It repeats about every two and a half seconds, uh, and you can predict exactly how it's going to behave, and go on behaving like that forever. So that is complicated, but it is not complex. Uh, this is the tree, and I'm depicting here, hopefully, <coughs> that it goes through a life cycle. Is that, every year, is that complex or complicated? Anybody like to suggest? I, sorry. What's happened? No, that's it. Uh, I, I would like to suggest that it depends on your point of view. And this is an idea which I think is, I'm going to develop. Um, to the ecologist, it is complex. All the different animals and symbiotic relationships that are going on between the ecology and that are, is really, really complex. To the structural engineer, this is a classically complicated but simple problem because all the members of the tree, tree can be calculated, their stresses and so, so on can be calculated because they're statically determinant. It's very simple, actually, to calculate as long as you know the masses of the bits. So it depends on your point of view. Now, here, um, the relationship between people, is this complex or complicated? <laughs> to, to, to the family there, it's definitely complex. But I would suggest to the priest who's marrying them, it's actually very simple. His job is simple, his responsibilities are simple. And so what I'm, 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 I'm the theme I'm building on is it, it depends on your po point of view and that we need to learn our, sorry, I've missed a bit. Uh, um, what's happening here? Sorry. I've exited something or other. <laughs> That's far too complex for me, yes. <laughs> can, you, can you rescue me, please? <laughs> I want to get back one side. So. Uh, there we are. Um, that's right. And, and what I want to just is to take this idea of a points of view to one stage further. Stakeholder points of view and understanding the different stakeholder points of view becomes, in my view, very important to understanding purpose and intentionality and the frustrations and negative factors for purpose. So there's, that's the point I want to get to. There are, in order to simplify this, you know, it, the, we need to understand what the stakeholder points of view are in our complex systems. <coughs> but the next thing we need to do is we need to learn to manage uncertainty because the emergent properties from our complex systems are such that you cannot predict them all at the beginning. And this is a quote from a, 
a publication produced by the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK uh, called Creating Systems That Work. And what they're saying is that uh, with all new complex systems, intuition rarely predicts the behavior of normal complex systems. And what that's saying is that we have to find new ways of managing those processes to successful outcomes. Because we can't just predict and provide, we have to learn to an outcome. And that is actually a very interesting uh, uh, reflection on why some things have gone wrong and some things have gone right. <coughs> In order that I have a definition for systems thinking, because not everybody would have the same definitions as myself, I have actually quoted from the International Council for Systems Engineering, uh, a little booklet that was produced, the Z7 guide on the subject. And it's really, it's about interconnected and social entities which are hierarchically organized producing emergent uh, uh, behaviors and understanding what that means and how we deal with that and how we structure things so that we can deal with it in a logical and shared fashion is what this talk is all about. <coughs> the uh, Royal Academy of Engineering in UK has also produced a booklet um, which suggests that that learning process actually has to meet me, have to make sure it starts with our children. That, that and in, in actual fact, there's some evidence to suggest that children are actually very good systems thinkers when they start, and the educational process uh, actually stops them or, or re restrains them from doing it. So it's only the rebellious ones like myself who actually get it, get through to it. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 the systems thinking is actually defined as an engineering habit of mind, and <clears throat> I find that very interesting because totally independent research done in America has come to exactly the same conclusion. But what it's, it both have come to is to say systems thinking is a necessary but not sufficient form of thinking. We also have to be analytical and highly scientific in our thinking. And we have as engineers to be able to swap from one to another. So the skill isn't to say one's better than the other, it's not. It's how do we actually work them together to get the outcomes that we really need. It's about learning together. <clears throat> so here is a clarifying principle, which I hope I can get through. And this is, this is, there are quite a lot of systems thinkers who come to the same view. Um, hard physical systems need to be recognized to be embedded in soft people systems. <clears throat> and the reason for that, I, I'm going to try and illustrate with this little kitchen knife here. This little kitchen knife can be used as part of a system for me to make my food with. But also, it can be used as part of a system to kill you with. Right? Quite capable of doing that. Right? Now, nothing changed with that knife as to what system, uh, 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 in those two systems. Nothing changed. The only thing that changed was the intentionality, the purpose. So what this illustrates is that we've got to pay, very, at all levels, we've got to pay particular attention to the purpose of what we're doing and how that relates to the purpose of other things. And, th and that's what this idea of all hard systems are embedded in soft ones is, is really important. And, and, and it, it really does begin to explain some of the things that have, have gone wrong in the past. Um, just as a slight aside to try and exaggerate the point, but one here, um, there is research going on at the moment at Bristol on safety assurance for robotic co-workers. The idea that the robot is not just a tool, but actually the robot is a co-worker, and that machine learning can be used to enable us to uh, use the advantages of the machine better than we have before. For example, fly-by-wire in aeroplanes is now landing most of our planes at airports every day. And that's a robot, basically, that's learned how to do it. It's supervised still, but it's not actually doing the landing. The pilot's not doing the landing, the robot is. So we need to, to have a robotic uh, cent centric point of view here, which integrates this safety conditions and start to really formalize the safety requirements with high level policies to guide the learning. So it's not just 
how do we relate to this physical thing? It's actually an interrelationship with the robot that we have to understand, and we have to have policies that will be safe. Now, that's an immediate problem. It was shown in the newspapers this Sunday in, in the UK. This machine, this robot here, is used to perform operations on people's kidneys. Right? Now, at the moment, the way it's done is that the surgeon is sitting there with microscopes to, for, uh, to show him what he's doing and operating the machine. But it's anticipated that within five years, that machine will be doing the operation and the surgeon will be supervising it. And the reason for that is that the machine will be able to do it better than the surgeon, more accurately, more precisely, with less intervention in, and so on. So the, 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 the problem of our relationship with these type of robotic systems is actually upon us now. And I think it, 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 it's useful for us to develop the thinking and so on around that so that we can come to positive outcomes. Um, now, I mentioned new process or how change happens. And I've, I've, I've put forward the point of view that it, uh, uh, it needs to be holistic. It needs to be about people and, and, and about integrated hard and soft and to align stakeholders to purpose. The process. Um, needs to define how change happens, and it includes the natural hard and soft systems. Now, my point here is that why, which is the purpose, is the driver, and how is the means, and it operates on who, what, where. Uh, now, that's just like we, our electrical equation, V equals IR. The potential difference is the driver, the current is the means by which the electricity gets round, and it's operated on the circuit, which is the resistance. Now, that's important because so many of our standards, so many of our systems are actually entirely restricted to how we do things, not why we do them. It's like making a cake. We can always make the same cake with a recipe, right? But if we really want a new experience of a cake, we've got to understand, actually, what it is and why, it, why, it, why we want it fluffy or why we would like it really nourishing and so on and so forth. So why is the really important part of this equation? And that it, 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 all I'm doing is emphasizing the philosophy we put forward. And now I'm taking it forward to look at some architecting systems. And this is an area which the Systems X is doing some, some really interesting work in. Um, you'll see that I've, uh, we've got the purpose here. Um, does that work? Can you see anything? No. But, um, the purpose, uh, which is from stakeholder views, and exploring and understanding the context of the problem, come into the need to establish a meta system for any major prom pro problem, uh, uh, major uh, engineering system that we, we want to architect. So we have a structuring, which I shall be talking much more about in a moment, and we need to be able to measure things. But the most important thing is we need to be able to understand what that's telling us. In other words, we can't just do it automatically. That, those recursive arrows that we have there are really, really important because all the mathematics and all the mathematical models we have are incomplete. They have limited uh, uh, validity. We need to understand that. We need to use that as a means of learning, not just as the answer. <coughs> So that understanding bit, and my gosh, getting students and so on to do that understanding bit is the most difficult part of this whole game. <laughs> now, that applied to the Olympics for a moment <coughs> in UK. Um, the, uh, the Olympics was a major complex systems problem. And it had complexity, or the Americans call it wicked problem, on one side. And it had a lot of physical things that had to be done on the other. So we had a program of construction going on, but we also had, uh, and that was de the Olympic Delivery Fol uh, Authority, and we had a, an organization which was in place to deal with these complexities. It was called LOCOG, actually. And the sort of thing it had to deal with is the fact that the whole of the financial uh, 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 world went crazy halfway through the project. And, very, and yet they had to still complete on time and on budget, which meant reorganizing and restructuring the project very considerably uh, and come up with some quite interesting and novel solutions. 
Um, now, <coughs> so, so my thesis here is all to do with that yellow part of the organization of how, we do, how do we do it and how do we do it better? And what did we learn from doing it? So essentially, if we actually look at it in terms of a learning process, here we have a, uh, a classic learning process, you can put it various ways, we're de learning about the purpose, the needs, the ethics, the knowledge and strategies that we're dealing with. So exploring, uh, uh, exploring, developing um, and planning and then implementing and then feeding back, a very classic learning loop. Now, um, we do that to manage uncertainties. How does that work, is the question. Well, here we are. This, this is the yellow part feeding down into the blue part of the diagram there. And what we find is that we've got projects and then things change and we have to have another go at sorting it all out. And, and then we find it's changed again and we sort it all out. Just to give an example, one of the big cost-saving things in the Olympics was actually they got rid of awful, a great deal of concrete and replaced it with spring flowers. The Olympics was in August, so they had to make the flowers flower in August, which was an even more interesting technical problem, but they succeeded. <laughs> uh, so, so it saved a great deal of money, but it was very nice, actually. Um, now, the point here is that we have the, that structuring process going on all the time, and it has to be brought up to date. It will not be accurate and totally correct at the beginning, but as we go on, we feed back the learning into it and improve it, and we develop what uh, we have called and are now uh, formalizing in as a learning journey. Now, this is the International Center for Infrastructure Futures, which uh, we are part of, uh, and, and this is now formalizing those processes into to the four steps, which of course start by identifying process, then generating learning power, and I'll come back to that in a moment, structuring, which I'll give some examples of, and then performing and executing. And those feedback loops are what I'm trying to get over, and that's what I was showing in, in the Olympics one as well. The learning power it is because this is about collaborative learning. It's not just about collaboration. It's actually about sharing the learning and coming out with outcomes which no individual has actually created. It's the team has created, and they've produced some really, really interesting results. So uh, what we've, we've been, been working on at the moment is what's called shared model building as a way of structuring the problem so that that model is not owned by any individual. That m model is owned by the team, and they're all the time feeding back understanding and understanding themselves what they're doing and sharing that understanding from that. So it, it aligns stakeholders, it uh, engaging the organization in performance improvement, identifying and dealing with unintended consequences. Now, uh, oops, sorry, uh, here is a, a very um, early form of shared model building. It's actually a model that was produced by the Electricity Authority in Hong Kong, or one of a series of models produced by them, with their, their, their staff prior to the takeover of Hong Kong by China. And what they were doing was sharing amongst themselves what it meant, or what they thought it meant, for China to be taking over. And they then got artists' impressions of that, and so on. And as you see, they had the river of time and so on. Now, the, the, what, the, whether the detail's right or wrong, isn't the point. The point is that the, the perceived understanding was actually communicated out into a shared diagram which enabled us to do something about it so that we can actually produce a better outcome as a result. So that's one form of shared model building using a rich picture and the whole set of those which are fascinating to watch. Here's another one. This is from Rolls-Royce and what they're doing is accelerating the improvement they're getting from um, systems engineering itself, and this is a model which has matured through about 18 months now. It's a systems dynamics model, which means that those boxes in there can actually be used to produce graphs of performance and continuous improvement and so on and so forth. But you see that the, that the actual subjects are quite soft, 
uh, and, but it can actually be expressed in hard mathematical terms. And it's helping the team. The team, though there's now a, a, a thesis just being examined, shortly be published on this, where you can see quite amazingly uh, developments that have come out of that from the team, and the team owns it. It's not somebody imposing it on them. It's their ownership. They know what to do about it. Then finally, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this one here is one which we've developed with the Treasury in the UK. It's an in interdependence planning and management framework which we're using in order to help the, 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 them get um, improvements uh, in the performance of infrastructure, but also deal with some of the un unintended consequences. Um, that framework looks, this is a very simple, simplified diagram, the top bar there is just the way in which projects are assessed by this treasury as to whether they're acceptable or not. Uh, that then goes down to forming um, the uh, framework that we've been talking about from stakeholder needs. Uh, that then forms into a, a oh, why isn't this happening? There we are. Uh, a a, a LAN N squared, that, that freight matrix is actually a very straightforward piece of systems engineering developed from space technology originally, actually. But it means we can work out the interdependence and then it goes back to stakeholders and stakeholder assessing against stakeholders and so on. Uh, whoops, gone too far. And then finally it goes back into a matrix which can be aggregated with all the other projects and so on. I'm fit winding up here. Uh, th this, this one here, this is the last example I'm going to take. This is a, uh, a model which we've been using for the system center itself. We've got some 100, 100 projects or so there. Each of them is with industry. That is producing itself feedback and impact and so on. But it's also producing a, a, a record and w from which we can begin to abstract the learning uh, on a higher level. What, what are methods that really work? What are methods that don't work so well? Why don't they work so well? What can we do about it? But then that is also part of the teaching process. And that then extends, and this is literally what has happened through the ICIF program, for example. This extends to, to engaging with policymakers, engaging with government, and so on. So they can see how this works and how they, the whole thing can be part of a, a better future. And then on the academic side, or uh, and, and organizational side, you've got a learning loop on the bottom there. And the academics themselves, this is the classic academic loop, feeding back to uh, the ability to generate transformative change. So finally, let us look at an old and history of what we're doing here, which is people, purpose, process, and performance. And that's the history, what I would argue is the historical position, but with the input of my systems thinking here, we move to a far better future, which is where I would like to leave this and invite any questions if you have time for them. Thank you.